Scott, Troy, thank you for coming on the first 365 podcast. For anybody who doesn't know who you guys are and the brand name, the brand name, like Pepsi, it's a brand name. (laughs) I'll let you reveal what the brand name is, but it seems to me to be plastered on a lot of different interests. Everywhere. So I'll leave it to you to introduce who you are and what you represent. So I'm Scott Swench, Scott Sawyers. Um, and we represent Swench as a whole. So the brand is Swench, but we've got Swench Online Coaching, Swench Kennels, Swench Supplements, um, but all sort of- Swench Renault. Swench Renault. Um, but it all sort of started from, obviously, a fitness background, yeah. YouTube, content creation, right before all of this, before it was actually a big thing. So um, yeah, we're a bit of everything now, influencers, YouTubers, um, but we built the business side thing with the online coaching, the yeah. kennels, and, Doing pretty well, so Swench is the is the the brand. Yeah, and would you say you're co-founders of that? Yeah, yeah. Has it been you guys from the start? Because I've seen people joining like Swench, yeah. coming under the banner, and then they're doing their own thing as well. How does that work? Well, Scott and Shai started Team Swench at the very start. Me and Theo were doing something together, um, and there was a little group of us who were like training and whatnot, just had the same passion for fitness. Um, and then we kind of, I think it was after like the first maybe year maybe a year or two of just training, training yeah. together, we kind of realised, you know, we could maybe make something from this, like yeah. do something professionally. Yeah. Um, so we just started like the whole Swench. It was a Swench gang originally. Yeah. So like, me and Shai were Team Swench Fitness, Troy and Theo were T Elite Fitness. And with that, at that time it was just social media. We just wanted to be like fitness profiles. It wasn't actually going anywhere in terms of business, but we were yeah. building up the social media. And then we started using the hashtag Swench Gang and then there was like seven of us. So we put it under that. Yeah. And then as we've sort of progressed slowly from the just social media into a- actual business, some of the other guys sort of did their own thing. Yeah. And then it's ended up just me, Troy and Theo for the bulk of it. And then yeah. just me and Troy for the, the coaching and whatnot. How did you guys meet? How do you know each other? Through the gym, like through a friend of a friend, really. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to you just started yeah. training together or? Yeah, to be fair, we, we wasn't actually training together. So we met through a friend um, and then I would be at the gym. How long ago was this? This was 2015, yeah. 2014 it's actually. really that long? Yeah, because 2015 wow. was the first year we competed. So 2014, I started going to the gym um, where Troy trained. And at that point we weren't really friends, friends. we were just acquaintances and whatnot. Yeah. And then like over a year, just the two groups sort of clicked and then that was it from there, really. So that, that was 2014. Yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing. So talk to me about these brands because there's obviously a handful, yeah. if not more, to count. Whenever I type in Swench now to find your profiles, yeah. it's just like this. <laughs> normally it's like you type someone's name in and there's all these fake profiles of yeah. those, that, that person. But with you guys, they're actually real businesses and brands. So let's start with the dogs. Yeah. Why are you guys, and essentially the dog business, because it's mainly bulldogs from what I can see. Yeah, yeah. How did that even come about? It's, uh, I think in general, just business as a whole, me and Troy have been very much just very, we just clicked and we just work well together and everything just flows. So from just do, being together and doing the coaching, the coaching was, is like our bread and butter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, essentially I, I wanted to get another dog. I was training someone who was a breeder and as I'm doing these sessions, we're just talking and talking. I think I right, put some money into this. I wanted to get a dog anyway. So I rang Troy, I said, it's five grand for this dog. I want to get it anyway. Let's buy it at the business yeah. and, uh, and just see where things go from there. And that was, uh, I, don't, I don't know when that was, when was that, 2019? And then now 20 dogs later. So <laughs> how does it work? How does actually being a dog breeder actually work? Where do you make your money? So right now, not many dog breeders are making much money, <laughs> I'll tell you that, but it's- um, Well, lockdown, everyone well, yeah, was grabbing lockdown, a dog. Silly money that uh, the pups were going for. Um, but yeah, essentially, so we bought a female and then you'd pay for a stud from someone else. We did that breeding and then you make the money for, from, from the pups essentially. So we do like high end in terms of quality. So the, the markup in terms of what you spend and what you can make it is huge. But like I said, over the last few years, it's died down a little bit. So it's, that's where the branding comes in. So now we do well because we've created a brand with it. So people want a Banksy puppy or a Luna puppy because we, they follow the, the dog's journeys and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we make money from obviously the litters that we do, but then we've got some stud dogs that are working pretty much constantly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's How do you guys make sure those dogs are actually looked after <laughs> to the standard? Because there's shit loads of dogs. I struggle to look after two dogs. Yeah. My bulldog, which I bought in lockdown oh, right yeah, before course, my, yeah. my son was born, which is a terrible decision. <laughs> 
And a similar story actually. So I had a client who uh, was a breeder. Yeah. Was he? Fuck. <laughs> he was just a guy who knew a guy yeah, who knew a guy. That's what it is now. To be and um, he had a litter that he had access to, and he was like, "Yeah." And I, and I reached out to you guys. I, I reached out to Roxy yeah, yeah. and you, and I said, "Look, what you yeah, saying about this I'm dog?" Right. Anyway, fast forward, yeah. He's a great dog, love this dog, right? <laughs> but turns out, so the, the guy who uh, introduced me to this dog, he was like, look, uh, let's co-own it, or you just okay, own yeah. it for six grand, right? And this was a time when I was making loads of investments. Investments. Yeah. Um, you know, Deliver Me was one of them, the dog was one of them, a couple of property things. And uh, he's like, look, you can breed the dog. It's a, it's a, it's a blue male, whatever color, you know, I knew nothing yeah. about it. I was like, okay, sweet. And then he was like, you just take it to the vet. They'll sort it out. And then you just take it home, do that once once a month, once yeah. every three months, whatever. And then you just sell the, the sperm on it. So I was like, oh, this sounds actually quite easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we want another dog for, for the other dog that we've already got. So then a month goes by, you know, we obviously want him to, to grow up a bit before we start messing with him. And, um, Another month goes by, he's growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously puppy training, he's tearing up the house, chewing everything up. Which I've seen your guys, old uh, previous players got destroyed. Yeah, pretty by, much. You got eight alive that house. Yeah. Um, and then I start looking and saying, okay, let's, let's see the money makers, let's see the, the knockers. So I'm feeling around, this dog's only got one testicle. <laughs> it's quite common actually. Oh, thanks for letting yeah. me know now. <laughs> it does happen. Where were you two years ago when I asked you in the first place? Check his nuts. It, yeah, because sometimes. So it turns out this dog's unbreedable. Yeah. Um, from an ethical standpoint, yeah, you know, after yeah. speaking to some people. Yeah. Um, but then I'm at six grand on a no ROI campaign. Yeah, but that's, that's the game you're in. Yeah, that is the dog game as a whole. <clears throat> yeah. Like we've had litters where you can make a crazy amount, but then we've had litters where we've had puppies die and. After you sold them. Happen. No, no, not after, just like oh, well, right. um, after they've been born and then you lose them out. We've spent yeah, like four, yeah. four litters yeah. we've had yeah. sales for it all. So and it's that's why I say you have to, you have to. What was that? We've had like four litter before, was it 13? 13, 13 pups. pups. We, had like, we lost. Sales for. You lost 13 pups? Well, probably like, within the week after they were born. One by one, it's, a, it's called a fading puppy syndrome. It's is it a bulldog thing? Is it just no? Name? That was a um, um, a, a bully, but um, it's just uh, it's with the bigger litters. Essentially, it's obviously a lot more for them all to get what they need when they're when they're growing and whatnot. From so, the mother, yeah. So they all come out looking amazing, but you don't know they basically haven't developed properly yeah. inside. So then over that week, we lost quite a lot of them. So that's why the, the dog game is hard. Is as much as it's uh, a profitable for profitable business. Yeah it's very temperamental so it, you have to be in it because you enjoy it and you want to do it otherwise it is completely up and down yeah because all the maintenance of these yeah dogs. even that yeah like the the maintenance food vet bills or vet bills are crazy so it's a it's it's a it's a good business but you have to love it yeah yeah For real. and scott and rocks are like dog mom and yeah. dad like we do it so anyway these are like their their dogs the babies I mean? yeah, yeah. so <laughs> when you said about sort of looking after them like they're all like our, our own dogs. Pets. Yeah, pet, pets yeah, essentially. Yeah. They're we not just, just business dogs. Yeah, we just happen to breed. So like we only do a maximum of two litters with any of our females. Then they're retired and they're just chilling and Fair we're best. Like we don't just it's, yeah. we don't just breed like that. So. so we had to chop the other nut off anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just to make sure. Because yeah. apparently if you get stuck up yeah, there, yeah. it could become cancerous. Because it, it happens and it, it, sometimes they can drop ages after, but if not, then yeah. Oh, bro, we were waiting. Yeah, yeah. I was there every day. <laughs> <Check> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> 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 Massaging his legs. Yeah. Like, come on, man, let's get this yeah. bad boy out. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's the dog side of things. Are you as passionate about it as Roxy yeah. and Scott? Yeah, I've always loved dogs and that's where we kind of got into it together because I think we share the, share the same passion. Yeah. Um, I've you know had one or two at mine. I've just got the one at mine now. Yeah, um, that, that's a big dog, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? Uh, XL. Right. For anyone who doesn't know what that is, what's that? It's basically like a large, the biggest large bully you can get. Yeah. Um, they're, they're bred like, how can I say it? For um, it's like, I think it's like a the pit bulls bred out of them. Yeah. So it hasn't got the aggression side of things. They're very very lovely dogs. Yeah. But they're a lot, you probably know yourself, if you've got a big dog, they're a lot more maintenance than maybe for a slightly real. smaller dog. Yeah, just exercise-wise, food-wise, yeah. just general care as well, so. Yeah. Amazing. What about the fitness side then? So you said it's your bread and butter, right? How many clients are you guys working with? Obviously I'm aware, but how many kind of clients have you helped in the fitness space? Um, what is it that you actually do for these people? And how commercially 
good of, of an opportunity is it for kind of what you guys are looking for out of business? Um, I'd say clients wise, um, I don't know, we've got to have at least three, three and a half, four thousand complete transformations. At the moment, we will probably be looking after anywhere from three to four hundred clients at a time. Um, but this has been over the space of like the last seven, eight years. We both started on the gym floor as PTs mm. um, and then just built up through the, the sort of online coaching side of things. So in terms of business now, the way we've set things up and the way we process everything, it's every single person can be our customer essentially. Everyone needs what we offer and, and we're good at it since in the results. So um, yeah, it's been an ongoing process. Like I said, it's been from the gym floor and we've both just built it up together. Yeah. What are some of the key moments that you think where, because look, you want, I'm assuming you didn't just start PT in and then a hundred clients came running to no, your door, no, no. right? What were some of the key moments for you guys in like your business journey where things started to pick up and you felt like you kind of had a, a success formula? Yeah. Um, we, we started like our transformations, which have been a great point for business because it creates a package where, you know, it's not a, a duration where it's long enough where people can't be bothered. It's a short enough time frame where they can get results and they can afford it as well. So we, first of all, to be honest, it wasn't even about the money. I remember we was yeah. talking and we was like, um, we need some transformations to create some more promo for us. Yeah. So let's put together a little 10 week challenge, get some before and afters, and this will boost the business. Yeah. And I think we probably got in about 30 people. Uh, it was 30 32 people on the first challenge, I always remember that. Yeah. yeah, and I think maybe like... Most of them are family and friends. And yeah, like yeah. <laughs> and like four or five maybe to the, made it to the end. Yeah. And we give away 250 quid. But we had four or five transformations, front, back, side. So we had three yeah. of each of each person. Um, and from there, we was like, right, we can kind of, we can do something with this. It's, it's working quite well. It's an easy way to get before and afters, transformations, it's easy way to find out. I forgot that that was actually why we started yeah. it too, was just to get that catalogue of transformations. Yeah. Like portfolio yeah. basically. Yeah. And it wasn't about the money, I think when we're going into business, that was the most important thing for us because we had a passion for what we was doing rather than thinking, right, we can make money off these people. Mm. It was, let's get some before and afters to show what we're good at, to showcase our work, to create more clients to come in. Yeah. And it kind of worked and then we literally ran them every other every other 10 weeks, we had a little break in between. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say, after that, the I think we've done it for about two years with the 10 weeks. Yeah. And then lockdown yeah. hit, and Scott and me, we messaged each other like, bro, what are we going to do? Like, people, oh, not in, a, not in a positive way. Yeah, we not like, initially, it wasn't yeah, positive, yeah, yeah. we just obviously... You weren't aware of what was going to yeah, happen. Yeah. But then so, we had that conversation and, and put a plan in place. And that same day, and it was like, mm. right, let's do six weeks. Let's see what we can do with people with home workouts. And I think we hit like... 300 and it was just under 400 people yeah just under 400 we just, people said, because the 10-week challenge format it worked perfectly but then obviously with lockdown and, and everyone not being able to train mm. we just had a little brainstorm and literally that we dropped it to six weeks called it the lockdown lockdown challenge was it lockdown yeah yeah, yeah. yeah six week lockdown program or something along those lines um and just pushed it out straight away mm. and uh, that that just boomed so that was probably the biggest not turning point but definitely sort of Escalated everything in, and put the stamp on things in terms of. I mean, like the accelerated online. the success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And in, in terms of the online coaching space, that put us up there because we were getting so much results. That obviously, arguably one of the hardest periods of of time for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, with no gym access, obviously everyone's having their own struggles. So for us to be able to be churning out all these positive results, yeah. that sort of put us, uh, you know, right at the top in terms of the online coaching space. Yeah. With online coaching, so obviously people are getting plans. Obviously, I know it, so I don't want to, you know, just make assumptions. But with the packages you're doing, so people don't actually have to, you know, see you guys physically in order to get the most out of their workouts. Now, what would you say is the difference between, apart from that difference, you know, the in-person stuff to the online stuff? Is there even any point if you're trying to build a personal training or an online coaching or a fitness business now? Is there any point in even doing that face-to-face -face anymore in your, your opinions? I think so, yeah. I think it builds good client understanding, how to do exercise, how to get them to understand things, how to motivate people one-to-one. -one. I think if you don't have that, you're, you're cutting yourself short a little bit. Yeah. You know, having that one-to-one -one experience is always going to be better than doing something online as well. And I think yeah. you just get a clear understanding for an individual. Yeah. I think that, that's why we've done so well, because we understand people. Forget about fitness and, and the actual training side of things like everyone mm. can find and source a good training program one mm. like it's going to work if you stick to it but the ability to be able to understand people and have empathy and and have understanding how to get the most out of someone and all these type of things that mm. come from being on the on the gym floor mm. working with all different types of people 
um, and just really taking everything in. So we've sort of transitioned from, use that in our online coaching. So although it's online coaching, in, and you know, a lot of our clients will say this, it, it's, um, it's not a faceless experience. Like they're still even just through voice notes and, and video calls and whatever it may be, we, get, we create really good relationships with mm -hmm. our clients and mm -hmm. we're invested in them and that equally they become invested in us and then that's it, then we get the yeah. results. You lot talked about then, obviously, that first challenge, a lot of people fall out yeah. and they don't complete the, the full programme. What are those completion rates like and how many people actually follow through and get through and you know use the commitment they've made to the max? Probably half. Yeah, it's hard to Why say. Why do you think that it? is? Why do 50% of anyone who signs up drop out? I think people just, it, it just goes with the way everything is now. People want- <laughs> I try the, thinking, uh, you know. <laughs> people want the quick and easy, don't they? People want, and that goes for, not even just fitness, people yeah. want everything quick and easy. That's just uh, like our generation now. So um, regardless of how well we can put a service together and how much we can help, it still comes down to you as a, a client yeah. to put the work in. And like I said, a, a lot of people don't have it in them initially anyway. To, to do the work required to get what they, they have as their goal in their mind, you know what I mean? I think it can be done like that. So, so what do you think motivates people the most to get into shape and what, what makes the 50% that do follow through actually crack on and get the result? I think you see just seeing the results and mm -hmm. having the confidence. I think a lot, I wrote about it the other day, I can't remember what, what I was doing, but um, I feel like because we, like I said, we, we really get invested with the client as a person, find out what makes them yeah. tick, find out where they've struggled throughout life and whatnot. And then over those first few weeks of being on plan with us, we try to engage in them in a way where it gives them confidence in themselves. Most people think that I can't stick to a diet, I can't do this, so I haven't got the time, or they've got their own personal reasons. So when you, we engage with them that way, we give them the confidence. Oh, you know what, it's been two weeks and I haven't eaten whatever, I, I've stuck to this workout. And then they slowly build confidence up from there. So from that point, it creates that sort of lifestyle change and, and then it mm. gets them through and, and they take it as a lifestyle change. And that's what we try to push it as, not you following a plan, mm. making a lifestyle change that's realistic, that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna get results. You can still live a normal life because I think a lot of people think both can't be done. And then it just it's just working with the person mm. rather than just getting them to follow a plan. Mm -hmm. With the online coaches, obviously there's a lot. I know there's yeah. a lot because we've worked with a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> over the years and some are good some are not so good and you can pretty much tell very quickly who's yeah actually doing it for the right reasons and who's just trying to trying to cash in essentially um obviously with our work together you guys are already walking into that with loads of transformation so it was good to you know have a small hand in what we did together what's the kind of industry inside feeling towards you know look there's a lot of competition there's a lot of coaches who are good at what they do is it like a supportive community of, you know, you've got Swench gang, all of a sudden you guys feel like it's kind of isolated, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And, you know, it's a gang, everyone's against it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it actually has a mad connotation, yeah, you know what I course. mean? What's the kind of feeling in the industry? Do PE show love to each other? Do online coaches really, you know, support each other? How does that look? Um, What's been your experience? <clears throat> I think we get on quite yeah, well with everyone. Us, we, we, we get on with everyone, I think, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and that's just based off of, like I said, like I was saying at the start, because everything we've done has just been natural. We haven't, up until now, we've only just, like you guys were the first marketing yeah. thing we ever even did and whatnot. Yeah. So everything's been very natural and that includes sort of the YouTube, the content and whatnot. So everyone has already knows what we're about and has got a good feel for us. So when it yeah. comes to the business side of thing or whenever we're promoting something, everyone's very supportive and we haven't had any issues. But I would say the space as a whole, um, I think it can be a bit bitchy and there's not, I want yeah, to say. Yeah, Everyone's in competition with each other, but like you said about there's so many coaches and that, like there's loads of coaches and whatnot, but I would say the majority of them are, are not good at their jobs. The majority of them are just trying to cash in on yeah, online coaching. Anyone can be a coach. Yeah, no. exactly. Anyone can be a PT. And that's good, but also bad as well. Yeah. So we, we don't really see it as competition. I see that as working in our favor. And mm. same because it's so saturated, but it's saturated with in my opinion, coaches that haven't got their credentials and aren't, haven't done enough to be able to, to call themselves sort of top tier in that space. Mm. So, so you don't really look at them as competition? No, because I find that there are, like, don't get me wrong, there's lots of good competition and we get on with everyone, like I said. So, um, <coughs> but when it comes to everyone else, and like I said, from the outside looking in and thinking how saturated it is, how many coaches there are, mm. for me, that's a positive for us because I know that not everyone has got the, 
you know, their credentials behind them, has got the experience and, and they're just trying to cash in. They've just turned into an online coach overnight. Mm. And clients will get that with the service and eventually they'll come back to a credible source. Mm. And we have that quite a lot, so not to knock anyone else, but we have loads of clients that have worked with X, Y, and Z people and whatnot and come back to us. And so yeah. I think we just focus on our quality of service. Yeah. And you said it the other day, you said um, there couldn't be any single person who come to us and say, oh, I'm 32, I've got three kids and I work full time and I want to put on a stone. Perfect, here's an example of what we've done and we've helped. You could be 19 and you know you want to lose two stone or you want to lose five stone. Whatever body type you are, age, ability, wherever you're at, we have got a transformation to prove and show you that it's possible and so, we've done it. Yeah, you've got case studies yeah, to, yeah, to bring in and stories of real people. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Let's talk about competing then. So obviously both of you love stripping down. <laughs> Flexing on stage, let's go! Pants, baby, oh, we love it. <laughs> you know what, I never know quite how to react you know, to your prep photos. I never know quite you know, how to Can everyone... I like this? <laughs> or do I just scroll past? You, know, you always want to scroll past yeah, on yeah. the left left of the screen. I think we've done a great job though because everyone's just used to it now. So all friends yeah, family, you know like, what? Yeah, you see us now in, in our little sparkly pants, you wouldn't think anything of it. But out of that context, you've got the boss. I'll just never forget, like you standing in your garden yeah, barefoot. Yeah, yeah. Just, Sliders on, I was thinking, what, what are the neighbours say yeah. when they see that, you know what I mean? But it's so normalised around Yeah, you've now. actually um, so you, uh, normalised yeah. it. Like my, my last prep, the amount of uh, interaction I had with just not, not normal people, people outside of the bodybuilding space, yeah. I don't understand any of it, but was proper invested in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, was, it was amazing, so uh, I feel like we'd normalised it a little bit <laughs> within, within our circle. So what is, the, what is the actual, like, how, you know, obviously your journey is you go to the gym, you start putting on some, some gains. What actually makes you make that transition to say, you know what, I'm going to actually go on stage and become a, a competitor in this? I think it's just like the, the higher level, the, the, the final thing to do in that, in that industry. If you want to, like first of all, you might do a little holiday prep, you can get in shape for that, get some abs. Next, you know, is either the photo shoot or a competition. I think there's a, there's nothing, nothing else in between, do you know what I mean? Right, and, so it's just like a natural progression. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's more... Before, I don't know, maybe nowadays it's like, it seems like it's just what you do. Once you get in shape, oh, I'm going to compete now. Whereas before it was very much like we were training and we were always trying to get to a more extreme level in that sense. But we were passionate about bodybuilding. We enjoyed bodybuilding. So it just naturally went yeah. that way. So like Troy said, I did a, I did a little prep for my holiday um, and that was like the best shape I've been in. And then I came back and then one of the lads at the gym was competing and I thought, oh, I'm going to give it a go. And then you competed a couple of months after that and then we just got really into the actual competing space. Right, so with, with the competing side, what's the, the benefit, apart from obviously you can get awards, is there any actual commercial benefit of winning a competition financially? Mm, no. no. I wouldn't say there's any money, but it's more the exposure we get for business. Remember, yeah, of this course. is what we've done for a yeah. living. So. Like what, how can you monetize that if you're, if you're thinking about going and competing on stage? What could be the benefits? Um, for us, it was, it's just traf it was just traffic. So we, we passionate about bodybuilding anyway, we'd compete, whether it was on social media or we was making anything of it, we'd do it anyway. But because we were trying to build our fitness profile, whenever we would compete, we'd document the whole process on YouTube, on, on our social media and whatnot. And that just gets people invested. Like I was saying mm. to you, not even just bodybuilding people, just people in general intrigued by what you do. Us regular civilians. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah because we put, in every, <laughs> we put in everything on there. So it's intriguing, even if you haven't got a clue what's going on. So what we found is that when we were prepping and competing, and we were doing YouTube and we were doing like the road to the Miami Pro or road to the British finals and stuff like that. People were enjoying the content and getting invested in it and it's just traffic. And then the business side of things has nothing to do with bodybuilding, it's our coaching, mm -hmm. it's our supplements, it's whatnot. But obviously more traffic through Swench as a whole mm -hmm. helps with that. So in terms of bodybuilding, there's no money in bodybuilding. No. Like there's people win more on our transformation challenges than you do in a... So who's actually organizing these things then if there's no money in it? I mean, there is for a federation. So you only have a few federations. You've got PCA, two bros, and they're like pretty much the two main federations. So there's money in the shows because obviously ticket sales and whatnot. Right. But as far as a competitive bodybuilder, yeah. especially now, back in the day, you could have a sponsorship that would pay you for the year and you do your magazine shoots yeah, and that. Yeah, but yeah. now it's like, you still have sponsorships and whatnot, but most competitive bodybuilders aren't making money off of bodybuilding. You don't, there's, there's minimal prize money until you get to the top end. It costs a hell of a lot to actually do a prep. Um, so th there's, there's not money in it, but you can use the, the traffic and you can use the promotion of you competing and whatnot to drive traffic to yeah. your business and that. that's all what we capitalise on. What do you feel like some of the, the negatives are in the competition space? I mean, is everybody healthy, fit, enjoying life psychologically? 
you know, 100% when they're getting up on those stages? And is everybody doing it for the right reasons? It's an, it's an extra, I class it as an extreme kind of yeah, massively. sport. So you're pushing your body to a place it doesn't want to go to. You're doing things that, you know, you're probably not capable of 10, 15 weeks ago. So it's like, of course, that's going to have a, a negative effect on your, your mental health, your physical health, if you don't follow the right protocol after as well. And come up to it. a lot of people will just get in shape and then maybe just completely fall off and go completely off track, put tons of weight on. Obviously, that's going to affect your mental health. Um, so I think, as we're saying, that's why we've kind of gone down the lifestyle route because our passion will always be bodybuilding. But it's not a healthy space yeah, at all. Like, it's yeah. not healthy. Uh, in terms of the extreme end of competing, when you step on stage, like you're not in a good place, you look great, and you're, but you're not in a good place. Yeah. Like if you could see the ins and outs of those weeks leading up to it. So it's like, I feel like if you're not a strong- How do you feel like, I've never done it obviously. It's like you death. can't sit down without a cushion because you, your bone cheeks and your bottoms hurt. Yeah, maybe you got- That's how lean you are. You're less than 5% body fat and you can't, you can't, I can't explain it. You can't function. It's just like you, you, you've got Zombie. complete brain fog. You can't speak. You've barely got any energy, but you've got to train, you've got to diet, you super low carbs. Um, it affects mentally, it affects your... I know what I'm laughing. Yeah. It just it sounds yeah. nuts. Yeah. It affects your everything, no sex drive, no energy, no nothing. You just literally... And Isn't just, that mad though? Because you look yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. the, the most absolute testosterone yeah, version of yourself. Man. Like, like if, a if, you've got, if you've got a problem with someone, if I catch them like a week out from the show and you batter them because they've got... <laughs> you ain't got no strength. No, that's you what I'm saying. The strength. No, I'm saying the person hasn't, the person prepping. So like it's, uh, it's death, that's what you have to enjoy. But in terms of like the healthy side of it, it's not healthy at all. It, it's not healthy, um, especially at that extreme end. Mentally, I feel, like I, said, I feel like if you're not fully self-aware and, and strong-minded, it will just destroy you Could take in you terms to of the, the worst there, place. Like, yeah, body dysmorphia is every every bodybuilder's got the body dysmorphia. What is that for anyone that doesn't know? Body dysmorphia is just where no matter how you look, you're, you're not happy within your physique. If, so you think you'll see like I always describe like like now when it comes to a holiday, in my head I want to look show ready for my holiday. Otherwise I don't feel confident. I won't I won't take my top off and I get past a certain point of body fat and to everyone else we're looking great shape, yeah. but I feel <clears> horrible, <throat> won't take my top off, won't have a best. So you're suffering and, from body dysmorphia? Yeah, not time. to the point where like I'm not a mess, yeah, because I'm I'm self aware, like I know I I, I know I, I suffer from it and I'm very self conscious times, but I know it's just that and I know it is body dysmorphia, so I can crack on, but I feel like if you're not that type of person it just happens. So we've had clients that struggle massively, don't mm. they? And even in the sense of outside of competing, when the show's done, because it's such a big build-up, you're doing 20 weeks, you've had a big long off season, then you're doing 20 weeks of prep, it's all for this one day, and after that it's all done. You don't have to get up at 5 a.m. to do your cardio, you don't have to do all these things, so people get completely lost with it. It's called um, gold medal syndrome. Yeah. It's what the Olympians get when they finish, or get their gold medal, they've got no focus and no goal. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So yeah. It's like you lose that There's goal. a lot of problems that come with it. Uh, Roxy, her, her depression was was caused from her contest prep and, and and trying to just get back to normality after the process of it and then dealing with the changes in your body and whatnot. So not not to make it seem like a, a, a you know a terrible sport, because like I said, we love it, but there's definitely lots of negatives that come with it. If you haven't got the right people around you, the right self, the right mindset, it, uh, it can be a tough space to be in. Is it worth it? What, in what sense? Competing? I don't know, just, but just that would have been a good <laughs> <laughs> I just felt that vibe then. You know what? You hear the dramatic yeah. music? Was it worth it? And you both went... <laughs> I don't know. Would you reckon it's worth it? I feel like... For oh, really? Personally, yeah. Obviously, I feel you like guys have worse. got no regrets about yeah. competing, yeah. surely. No, I've no regrets it. at all. Yeah, but, but, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Depends it depends what you do. Obviously, before. I'm not talking about getting fit. I'm talking about going and taking your body to yeah. that most. It's not just your body, man. Yeah, it's yeah, your yeah. spiritual, it's more, it's more, mental, yeah, it's more mental than hormonal. I think a lot of people just want to experience it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if that's a good idea. Yeah. Because it's too expre extreme just to experience. Because, as Scott was saying, once you've been in that level of conditioning, nine times out of ten, you're always going to compare yourself to that. Well, so nothing else is well, ever going to be good obviously enough. Obviously, I used to be a basketball athlete, played on scholarship in America, did some good stuff. I was 8% body fat at one point because I was like, I need to get my weight down. Yeah. There's nothing to go, but to myself, it's probably a bit of that yeah, dysmorphia or whatever yeah. it is. So I cut out sugar from my diet completely and I just got to 8% because I wanted to jump higher because yeah. I couldn't jump for shit. So I was like, if I'm lighter with the yeah. same muscle, I'm going to jump higher. It didn't work out that <laughs> way anyway. I just sucked off. When you see the photo, I was just so sucked. No muscle mass, yeah, no yeah. any mass, just some big stick. Yeah. And... Um, like now, obviously, 
I'll always compare myself. When, I, when people say, oh, you know, whenever I was doing training or whatever, whatever, they'd be like, oh, um, you know, I'm definitely talking pre-parenthood. You know, you're looking in good shape. And I'm like, do you call this good shape? Like, I used to be yeah, yeah. lean cuisine, like, athlete. You yeah. know what I mean? And it sounds like a similar thing. Yeah, because you're always body. compared to So that. now, do you feel like you've kind of, or do you feel like bodybuilders as a whole, like, have you guys kind of set yourself for a, a positive trap in the sense where you always have to maintain a standard of this fitness? I think we enjoy it though as well. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's a us. positive trap, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. you, you, you've got this body dysmorphia, but that also means you're yeah, going to stay yeah. healthy and fit. That's what I say. For, for us, it, it's 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 for us. It's a positive because we're not, you know, we're not sort of um, what's the word? We're not uh, so we're not we're not defined by it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. we love bodybuilding. We love being bodybuilders um, and all of that stuff. But we're not defined by it, so we we can ha- we can understand why we feel that way, why we're conscious about certain things. But yeah. it's, it doesn't affect us moving past that point. But as I, I think a lot of people haven't got that sort of self awareness yeah. of it, and it, it, it it's uh, it can be a lot. Because then most people. Have you got any examples of when it's gone wrong? Because it seems like you're referencing some specific time or some spe- specific person uh, for, well, who's really suffered. Yeah, I mean, we've had clients before that have, like I said, once they've competed, and then remember, you, you especially, it depends on your starting point. So, with everyone's fitness journey, most people have started from being overweight, and then they have it, they've got those insecurities. So, I think a lot of people that maybe don't know when you're maybe you're overweight, maybe you're really skinny, whatever you started as, that was your insecurity. When you get to whatever you your goal is, people think that that's it, you're happy then, but you're not. Those insecurities and whatnot still come with you. So, yeah. for me, I was fat, I was, I was overweight. Were you? Yeah, right when I started, and that was my kickstart into training. So, now it's like I still have all the tendencies and all the the little um, insecurities and habits, like I'll always do this and that because, and or just little things, you know what I mean, that you do and, and that follows you no matter how good you get in shape. So I think the, when we've seen people struggle is, we, especially with bodybuilding, you go from one extreme to the other, you're completely shredded, then you're going into your off season, you might be 20, 30 pounds heavier. So people can struggle a lot with that mentally. Female clients struggle with that quite a lot more than, than male, male ones, I reckon. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of yo-yoing in terms of body weight, in terms of how you look, your wardrobe, how you look in things, and so it becomes very self-conscious about everything. Yeah. What's the effect on your relationships when you're in that brain fog pre, <coughs> you know, prep, pre-competition zone? Is there any consequences? You've you yeah. got to have a good partner. Yeah, yeah. it's straight, for the, the partners, they're, they're, <laughs> I can only speak for rocks, but I don't know if I can laugh because yeah. I don't know what you're going to say next. Nah, just I know that I was a night, not me personally, but this whole situation is uh, everything's focused on you and that show. So eating food, the food shop, you haven't got energy to do anything else. You've got no sex drive, a- everything. So it's a lot to uh, you, like you're short and snappy with everything. Um, my partner would love it if I had no sex drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, would be like, yes, yeah, leave but, me alone. Well, that's the thing as well. So. Uh, yeah, man, it's um, it's a lot for the partner um, in your relationship, but it also helps massively when they're understanding and they get it as well. So it's like it just depends on your relationship. Really. Did you both have that support? Yeah. 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 Fair. Let's talk about the juice box, which is obviously a massive part of competing. Yeah. Now, some people are massive promoters of steroids. Some people are massively anti-steroids. Now, can you compete without steroids successfully and win competitions? Because again, you've got these two groups of people on social media right now. One group are saying, I'm natty. (laughs) And you're looking at them, yeah. And if you've got any education in steroids at all, it's impossible physically for them to even consume anything else to get to that that state, in my uneducated opinion. (laughs) But I did study, you know, these kind of subjects. Tell me about steroids. How important are they in the competing world? As you said, I think in the natural world, it's it's not even a thing. Um, but in the competitive assisted route, it's very difficult because you're kind of forced into it. Because if you step in on stage, you're going to be stepping on stage. You might have done the same amount of work, the same food as this person next to you. Yeah. But if they're taking something, they're an assisted athlete, which is going to give them the extra added benefit. So yeah. competing has become something which it's just normally used in. Yeah. I think, have you guys seen a rise in, you know, your clients' um, openness or wanting discussion around steroid use? Because I can tell you for a fact, when I was a teenager, I had people uh, in my network, I won't say the exact relationship (laughs) without baiting them up, but they were taking juice and they were probably the age I am now uh, at the time. 
And we were very aware of that. We were actually there whilst they were, you know, injecting steroids, uh, picking up steroids. We just seen it all as around it. Um, but it was kind of like no one was really aware of yeah. what was going on. Like nobody who would see their physique, they had a pretty good physique, would think that they're on juice or even associate it. But because of obviously social media, because of the fitness industry and how much attention it gets, a lot of people who I've, you know, grown up with like school friends now, you know, I haven't seen them in years and then you turn up and they're just blown up. Yeah. And, you know, some of the side effects are very easy to see. They've got hair everywhere. They've got a way deeper voice. Yeah. Their jaws, <laughs> you know, solid as a few of the things. Do you feel like it's become a bit more normalised for yeah. people to take juice, not even if they they are competing or not competing? Yeah, massively. As a whole, like I said, steroids has been completely normalised. Now it used to be a taboo subject, a taboo subject. So, like I said, you, the only way you would even know is if you were training at probably like a a, a more old a foundry school, gym. Yeah, fa <laughs> training at a foundry, or old school gym. You'd have to be in there training for a while, you know, to be, and then you'd probably get taken under the wing by one of the guys there, Dave from the gym, and then, then you'd get some D-ball or something from Dave, and then you'd progress that way. Whereas now it's like, I said, I think it's with the growth of the fitness industry, with the whole, are you natural or are you not? It's become completely normalized now. So people that forget about competing, like 90% of people want to or know about steroids or, or ask us about it and whatnot. So, um, 90%? Yeah, everyone. Everyone wants to know every, what's the deal with it. I personally think Is everyone, it safe? It, most people in the gym, are, are using steroids or have used steroids or have dabbled. The amount of clients that come to us and that have already done X, Y, and Z and we have to take, take, them, take them off stuff and do, like, it's, it's, it's completely normal in a normal gym space, let alone yeah. competing. Competing it goes, is neither here or there. Unless you're competing in natural bodybuilding shows, everyone's on gear. One and two maybe. We had a client with me who was, who was completely natural, a young lad, and um, he done really well, got second in his first show, completely natural. Um, but same again, you have to have a certain genetic makeup to, to to compete at that level without using anything. And even him, at some point down the line, if he really wants to get to where you know the higher levels of bodybuilding, you'd have to go down that route. But mm -hmm. across the board, in terms of just your everyday people, it's completely normal now. Yeah, like, everyone. Yeah, it's you wouldn't even hear stuff talking to talk, people talking about it before. Yeah, but it's completely normal now. How would someone get access to steroids? You said Dave in the gym. Yeah, yeah. So you talk, it, it, Tommy, it's still illegal to sell steroids, but it's not illegal to take steroids. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, it's, so yeah, it's illegal to sell them. It's not illegal to use them or take them. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, you can, like I said, everyone's got a Dave in the gym that you, that, that sells them, or you can go to, you can buy them online. Dave's in the gym, Dave's, I'm just getting I know, slandered sorry, right Dave, now. Sorry, <laughs> Dave's like, my, man, my boy Dave yeah, yeah. got juice. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's WhatsApp's easy. are blowing up right now. It's, it's easily accessible. I you, think there's an app. I think there's an yeah, app. Yeah, there's, there's apps. Like there's there's websites, apps. Sites, there's social media sites. Wow. Um, so you, it's easy to get hold of any kind yeah. of steroids now. So what has that played in your own competitive journeys? Have you dabbled? Have you avoided it? Yeah, no, we've, we've used it on, uh, from, for, for our competing, 100%. Yeah. Um, we've had to. Like I said, we both competed at, we got to the level where we uh, won British titles. Troy has competed at a world level, um, and you're not you're not getting you're close not getting to him. No, you're not. Unfortunately, like it would be great if you didn't, because there are health implications and, and all these other things. But so how comes you aren't afraid to admit that? But there'll be other people out there who would never, yeah. in a million years, go down the route of saying, "Yeah, I've taken steroids and I've competed in bodybuilding." Why is it like? Still, it is still yeah. a bit too to admit yeah. it. And I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, I feel like you see people and you think they're not, and you've got the other lads, women or whatnot, who think, well, I can't get to that, so I'm gonna have to use this because I need to get to that. Yeah. yeah. And if they're just completely honest, they might have a different opinion. Oh, they've took that to get to that. Do I really want to look yeah. like that and risk taking it at the same yeah. time? I think we've got, a, I don't know, well, for us anyway, we've got, a, we feel we've got a responsibility to be completely transparent. Number one, in terms of how everything's been built in all of our business has been through transparency, everyone yeah. being able to see the ins and outs of us and whatnot. So for us to lie about certain things, it takes away from that. Like no one can say anything about us because our integrity is there, our transparency is there. So yeah. there's that element of it. But equally, we, you know, we have a lot of people that look up to us. We inspire a lot of people. We have a lot of clients. So we've got a responsibility to, to make yeah. sure that we're honest about certain things. We, you know, if you're coming to us as a client, we explain to you exactly what is achievable, what's not, you know, and, and what we've done and, and all those type of things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think for that reason, that's what, that's what makes us just be transparent with it because 
it has to be because a lot of people aren't and, and, it, and it can be damaging. 100%. Like, I, you know, it's very interesting for me to hear, you, you know, you guys say that you've used steroids because, again, there's so many people who would never admit yeah. it. But also, probably helps your clients because if you're saying 90% are showing interest, you guys have actually got a genuine experience yeah, exactly. of yeah. you know, using lot, steroids. You come. need to do that for their health and safety because one thing that I discovered in my research into steroids when I was on them, I'm only joking, I was, <laughs> just for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I am Dave. Um, but one thing I noticed was like, there's, there's steroid use and then there's steroid abuse. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So what's the difference for anybody that doesn't know? Because people are like, are you either on juice and you're gonna die yeah. or you're not on juice and you're still going to die anyway, just yeah, maybe yeah, a little yeah. later. What's the difference? Lack of knowledge. Like I said, it's just like the kind of bro, bro science, old school methods of what you feel. The amount of clients who come to us and like, we're taking this, 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 yeah. this, this, and we're like, who the hell has told you to take this? Yeah. This is what we need to do. We need to make sure health markers are being checked, blood works right, for you to actually be okay to do this first of all. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. advising it. We'll get people who come to us and say, uh, you know, I want to look like Scott in the British final. What was he taking? Yeah. Well, first of all, you haven't got Scott's genetics, so you're it's not going to be able to it's do It's just it. what he's taking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like that kind of undermines your hard work when people are like, oh, he was just on juice? I feel like it, 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 it doesn't because it's we understand, yeah, again, we understand yeah. that. It's ignorance. That's yeah. not it's because I, I would say the, the best example is if that was the case, and it was, you get those results just from taking gear, then we'd all look absolutely nuts. Everyone would be... All the time. Everyone would, yeah, exactly. But, you know, like, there's a reason we've been in shape for 10, 12 years plus. Like, yeah. it's, and it's nothing to do with gear. It's because we, we put the work in, do you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? So yeah. if, if that wasn't the case, like I said, everyone would be in great shape. You wouldn't need mm. personal trainers. You'd take a bit of gear and everyone would be massive. But mm. that's not the case. So it, it is generally just about making sure... There's, everyone's getting a full picture of, of what's achievable, what's not, and like Troy said, we the get the pros and the cons. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and the cons, the, the cons, far outweigh the uh, outweigh the pros. Like, what are they apart from obviously the ones I listed? Um, energy, obviously, you can have cardiac issues, hair loss, um, you know, hormone issues are the biggest one, fertility. Um, what else? Mental health issues, yeah, anxiety, health, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. loads of things which are affected by it. But again, this is just misuse and lack of knowledge. Yeah. And I think there is a lot of more better, better educators out there who are providing it. And as you said, that's probably why and being it's honest, more, yeah. more spoken that, about. That, yeah, that is a positive of where the fitness industry has gone yeah. as well. It, it, there is a lot more information out there. So whereas before people just yeah. doing a course and not having only knowing what what they're being told. Whereas now you can there's loads of people yeah. putting out content, you can see studies, you can see research, you can get a coach that just deals with blood work and stuff like that. So it is way better, but you know, the, the difference with, there, there's no such thing as completely safe use of steroids. Yeah. There's safer use models and, and a safer way to approach things and r decreasing the risk as much as possible. You've got to shout him out. Uh, you got to shout oh him yeah, out. Oh yeah, we've got to shout Yeah, there's a Victor Black. Shout out to Victor Black. Who's that? <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, he's a, he's, <laughs> it's <laughs> not, like Dave, it's, nah, nah, it's a complete rabbit hole. Victor Black created like safer use models, which is like way to oh, use okay, PDs, right. but then, no one sort of gives him credit, so he's just a crazy man on the internet now oh. that, that attacks everyone, and he's got like reason, but yeah, it's a whole different. <laughs> yeah, he's a controversial guy. Yeah, but um, yeah, so but in the sense of abuse, like I said, people will do a steroid cycle, twelve weeks, sixteen weeks, and then maybe they, they might never even come off, or if they do come off, they don't do proper PCT and don't do the right steps afterwards, yeah. and that's what messes your hormones up, and so that that would that's where the abuse comes in because they're just hammering it without any afterthought of what's actually going on inside of them, just how they look. And nine times out of ten, people take steroids and they're like, if you ask someone who's taking it, why are you taking this exact one? Well, because it gets me massive yeah, yeah, or yeah. it gets me lean. How, how do you know that? What's, what's your evidence? Like they don't you know? actually know what. Yeah, he told me that it's going to get me massive. Yeah. Whereas we've always spent time and spent money and invested in ourselves to have a coach who would be a specialist in them, who would look after our health, who would ensure we're taking the right amounts for our body weight and everything like that. Yeah. So it's done. How properly. do you validate that though? <clears throat> How do you validate and trust the person giving you that advice? I'm assuming this coach ain't a doctor. No, no, no. Well, sh uh, shout out to Joe Jeffrey. So Joe, Joe was our coach who, um, I'd say probably we did the most work with yeah. around sort of PDs and whatnot. Um, and I, I don't know what I've, I don't know. I should know. I don't know what his complete background is, but. Um, he's, 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 I know, sound like a I don't really know where yeah, he came I don't from. Know where he's, but he's a. Uh, he's, um, <laughs> the shit worked. <laughs> what's the word? okay, he's uh, he knows what he's talking about. He's got like a, the education behind it. He's not just a, a bodybuilder that knows. Yeah, so, like, research he's got the, based. He's, oh, okay. Yeah, he's right, got yeah. the education behind it. He's got the qualification behind it in terms of biochemistry, all these things. So <laughs> that's why we initially got him as a coach because 
we kn- not we know all the training stuff, but training, nutrition, yeah. that w- we've got that unlocked, but we wanted that sort of What's expert, the best route to get advice, in what yeah. you want to? Because yeah. like you said, different stuff does different yeah. outcomes for your bodies, right? Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. That, that was, he was our go-to, well, he still is our go-to. So even now, if we have clients that are, we're going through their blood work or they're, you know, we don't feel like we have enough knowledge for that, we'll yeah. refer to, to refer to Joe and then he yeah. takes care of that. So, um, yeah. The, cool. I'll probably blank his name out just in case yeah. uh, there's any repercussions of that. But what's this TRT? It used to be HGH, uh, wasn't it? Human Growth Hormone. Yeah. And this is from me back when I was actually an athlete and I'd be you know, training in the gyms every single day. Um, and there was a, there was a gym, uh, I can't remember, it was on the way to Solihull, but there was a gym I used to go to and uh, they started talking about potentially using human growth hormones to help with my, uh, my bounce, my athletic oh, ability yeah. to jump high. Um, obviously I didn't, first of all, I couldn't afford it. Second of all, yeah. I had no idea what the guy was on about. But this was actually someone who the family knew as well, so there was like, you know, trust there. And then recently, testosterone replacement therapy seems to have come out. Yeah. What are these things, do you even, have they come across? Have you seen like changes in the, the kind of model and what people are using now? Because a lot of celebrities like, in the business space, like Grant Cardone, are using testosterone replacement therapy, and he's in his fifties. Yeah, you know what I mean. What are these things that are, you know are getting popularized now? Um, so TRT is exactly that is testosterone replacement therapy. So initially, it's for a person who has got natural low test levels. So before you look into anyone that's got any sort of actual issues going on with them, as we as we get older, your natural test drops. So. TRT typically used to just be for people that were maybe mid 30s, 40s, not necessarily, but generally getting getting older, our test levels naturally drop. And that has like, it slows everything down, you know, so, um, you know, strength, the ability to, to build muscle, um, cognitive health also, it, it's, it's a positive thing. So TRT basically is a monitored steroid cycle, essentially, that mm. keeps your health markers within range. So, um, but it, it's not, not to the point where it's super physiological, it's just within range. Right. So if, you, if you're, if you I don't know, like myself now, I'm like 34, so getting a bit older, if my natural test levels were low, TRT could be, and I was starting to feel it, maybe fatigue, I'm not recovering well, yeah. sex drive has dropped, stuff like that. These are all signs of sort of, um, you know, low test levels. Mm. So at that point, you would go to a clinic, they would give you TRT, and essentially it's just testosterone, but they monitor all of your health markers and make sure everything's within range, bring your test to within normal range, and that's you on TRT. But essentially it's just testosterone. So it's it's been normalized to the point now where people they they use they say they're doing TRT, but they're just cruising on a certain level of test to keep their levels a bit higher. Yeah. Um, Cause this guy's in the best shape of his life and he's 50 though. Yeah, so that's yeah. why a lot of people are TRT is all positive yeah, because yeah. it's done correctly. Like I said, it's not taking you out of range to the point where... You, so there's no abuse of it or no, anything No, no. Like and if you how do, do you, How do you know what he's actually taking? Because his coach promotes TRT. Yeah. He's like uh, the health psychologist, uh, not, not psychologist, yeah. the physiologist mm-hmm. who's partnered with him and he's kind of the case study yeah. for it. So like, TRT is nothing he just to do does with like celebrities mainly. Yeah. TRT yeah. has nothing to do with bodybuilding. It, it, it feels like it is now just because of how normalized steroid is, but yeah. TRT is actually nothing to do with bodybuilding. It's generally a, a medical like, thing that oh, right, you right, would right. need if, you, if you've got low test levels. So it's the kind of thing you go to your GP for. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, get, yeah. You, get, you get it from your doctor or from, from a, uh, they'd refer you to a clinician and yeah. you'd get it that way. All right, let's pull away from the juice, man. That went a bit longer than I thought it was going to, but I'm actually interested, you know what I mean? Yeah. At the end yeah, of the there's day. There's so much to it, isn't it? Look, is it? people don't want to talk about <laughs> it, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, that's probably leading to more abuse of it yeah. than, you know, I'll never forget when, when these guys were doing this juice, um, it was Sustenon and Dekanon or whatever it is. You know, they'd be buying it in a car park behind some random gym. Um, we, we, we'd just be there like not knowing what's going yeah. on. Next thing you know, shoving them in their legs and their ass and their shoulders. Um, and then the only thing that they would do, right, and this, this, this makes me laugh to this day, only thing they would do, I'd love to get your opinion on this, they'd take the steroids and then they'd go and get vitamin C tablets and just smash three vitamin C tablets in a day and say, yeah, 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 it helps with the uh, absorption. Yeah, and, and that's it. I mean, I've never that's had complete, that. Yeah, that's complete. Like, <laughs> so you know them packs of like boots, yeah, vitamin yeah, yeah, C yeah, tabs yeah. that are like, 
They yeah. turn your urine bright orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just smash these every day. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it balances it out. I, 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 obviously, at the time, I was like, whatever. You know what I mean? But now, when I look back at that, these it's, guys are absolutely nuts. Yeah, that, that's, I don't know where they've got that from, but that's. that's it's folklore. Yeah, complete, complete. And like, yeah, have these, really yeah. Anything. They're going to have these kind of side effects, but yeah. make sure you get some vitamin C. Like it doesn't make no sense. You're going to put something in your body that literally changes your blood work and your hormones, but have a few vitamin C and you're all right. No. <laughs> no, no. But that, that was like, that's old school bodybuilders, isn't it? You just yeah. do what you're told and you crack on and you only know from, from that person because bodybuilding was tiny. Yeah, then, it's like it's, before, you know, this is like before. Even the internet yeah, was yeah, the internet course, that yeah. it is today. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the times where, because it seems like you guys, you know, you have success with the thing, Swench has success with a the brand, then you go create another Swench brand. So you talk about Swench, Renault. Um, first of all, how do you balance all of these things? Because from what I'm aware, the team's quite small. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mainly you guys that are carrying the weight and the load of, first of all, the content, then you've got the actual businesses and the sales processes in those businesses. Then you've got actually delivering for customers. Who are the team and how the hell do you balance it with everything else you've got? Obviously you've got personal lives, but it seems like you're working all the time. I wouldn't yeah. say it's balance. I say it's- We uh, don't have balance. Yeah, I feel it's just like, this is what comes with it. Yeah. Like we, we didn't want to do nine to fives and we've kind of accepted that if we've got to work at this time and doing this, we try and have our, our time where we, yeah. we switch off. I think that's also important, but because there's obviously two of us and you know a, a team kind of behind us in that sense, we do say to each other, right, bro, you just have this time to do this. You gotta do this, okay, you do that, I'll cover yeah. this. We balance that well, yeah. and that doesn't have to be the same all the time. So you guys feel like the <coughs> sacrifice is, is necessary, and right now you're just all in on yeah. business. We've had to be, because it's been such a personal brand, and, and that's been like, it's like a double-edged sword. That's why I feel we do so well with everything, because like I was saying before, we've got integrity. So whether we're trying something new or it's in the space we're in already, We've got that trust from people, so that's why we do everything ourselves and we're very much hands-on. And even, even with, like I said, with you guys, it was the first time we'd actually had a marketing team on board, had any kind of structure and that side of things. So mm. to, to put that in someone else's hands has always been a bit of a struggle, hasn't it? So there hasn't been any balance. Like We could literally work 24 hours a day, every day. There's all, there'd always be something to do. So in that sense, it's, been, it, it's definitely hard. But once again, because we're passionate about everything we're doing and we have each other to bounce off. So mm. like I said, I've been super busy with the house over the last few months. Troy's, right, you go sort that. I've got, he's got clients in the evening. If you can pick things back up from the evening, cool. So then I'll have a couple of hours or Troy's going on holiday on the weekend. So I'll do the same. He'll still yeah. be working while he's away, but I'll do the bulk of it and manage certain things. So having each other to bounce off has definitely helped. But in terms of balance, I'd say that there really isn't none. Luckily, we've had each other. Our partners are super invested in what we're doing and have the same yeah. mindset as well. So it, the understanding's there, so it works. What's the motivation? Like, what's the end goal? What is the actual thing that you guys are working towards with all of these different business endeavors? It's, I feel like it, it's, it's changed along the way. Yeah. I think, first of all, we had a passion. We had a passion for fitness. We enjoyed that. Next, we obviously wanted to make money because who doesn't at the end of the day? And now it's more so just about making sure everyone else, for me, everyone else around me is okay. You know, I love nice things. I'll always be that guy, but I feel like seeing the people around you happy is much more important. And the hard work kind of goes to them, you know, treating your mum and dad or getting your partner something, looking after the little ones. You know what I mean? That's the, that's what drives me every day. Mm. Yeah. I feel like as a business, I feel like there isn't an end goal. We always, that's why we've got so many things or we, because we just, like, you'll know yourself, once you complete one thing, it's not just all right, I'm done now. You, you already go, you're already going down different paths. So I think the enjoyment of, of creating things that are successful, the enjoyment of working hard and seeing things pay off and, and sort of things that you never expected to happen, you know, be you, you know, well past you and you want to match other things. So um, I think there's the drive to be better and to be successful. And I think it helps, I don't know if you agree, but I feel like it helps with us because we help so many people and we like, literally have life changing interactions with our clients and that it's like i feel like we needed i feel like i have a purpose like mm. we're changing lives that gives us purpose so there's no like end date on that there's no like end goal of that it's just like we can always do yeah. that you so, feel good being yeah of service. massively like we we, we have fulfills you. yeah yeah i'd say that's probably yeah. in terms of the coaching anyway it's the fulfillment like we literally we're changing people's lives and we, we get that affirmed to us by our clients daily and 
no, knows the amount of money or business success can compete with yeah. that. Because so you remember the people, you remember yeah, what happened, yeah. you won't even remember we, how we, much they paid. Yeah, yeah, we do it every week, Scott, I'll be like, look at Sam's transformation and we'll go on for a week. I'm like, oh my God, I'm sitting there in the office, like just yeah. gassed over it but together. We get, in, yeah. we get in paragraphs back about, you know, a client that's maybe overcome the depression or was in this place or, you know, stuff that goes way beyond the physical appearance. Mm. And that that's what drives in terms of the coaching space. So for us, it's just about creating, building the business as much as we can so we can help more people and, and that there's no end, end date on that. One thing that obviously, Troy, you mentioned was you've recently become a father like myself around the same time, like lockdown yeah. babies, getting busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been the same day. What's the birthday? Uh, June 18th. Uh, March 13th on my side, so a little bit later. <laughs> You're probably busier than me. <laughs> We're working all these businesses. Um, how has that journey been? Because obviously, again, you've got all these business babies and now you're a parent. So how has that transition been? What does that look like in your world? And you know, how does that actually fit in to everything that you're doing? Because you're such a busy guy. I think you just kind of make it work, don't you? I think regardless of what's going on, when people say, you know, you when you have kids, it's like, you know, you wait for the right time, you want to get a house or a certain amount of money, but it never happens like that. And I think, the way that it worked to myself was just, I just kind of made it work and I think it gave me more motivation because now I've got this little person relying on me. So I've got no, no reason not to be motivated now. So that just got me out of bed every single day. The routine, the sleepless nights, all that kind of stuff was, again, all new, but I think you just get used to it. Mm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get used to it. Uh, well, we used to sleep for like four hours anyway. I think right. what we do, we're, we've worked endless hours in it. Yeah, I think with you, it's obviously, it's obviously harder, but like I said, you've never needed any extra motivation. No. So Troy's always on like it. on it. So it's just been another thing that it, it put yeah. into his routine and hasn't slowed him down. So, it's, uh, so you it's, said that motivated you more than anything else. How much, you know, because, you know, you're saying like, the way that I hear that, I hear that and I, I think about what that looks like, I'm more motivated more than ever but motivated to do more work than ever. Mm -hmm. So is the thing that I actually want to support, the, the child that I want to support, actually making me work harder and longer yeah. to now not actually spend the right amount of time and resource with, with my son and my daughter? So for me, I'm always having this question in my mind, like it's made me more disciplined yeah. on when I'm working and when I'm not working and what hours are theirs and what hours are mine. Uh, to do to work, I literally am a dad, or I work. That's all I do in my life right now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that, you know. Yeah, yeah. A little bit happier, maybe. Like, <laughs> how did you approach that though? Like, are you still working as much as you were before? Do you feel like it's to the detriment of your father-son relationship? No, I think I've got a nice balance with him, and I prioritise time with him. And when it's him, you know, phones away. One because you can't be on the phone with him because he doesn't let you go on the phone, but. <laughs> Just oh, making sure, yeah. Just making sure you got the time with him, and like I said, the same way we put time aside for our relationships. That's that's part of it because our partners are the reason we get stuff done as well. They play a huge role, so you've got to make sure that you're putting energy into that. You've got to make sure you're putting energy into your family. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's been, it's been interesting. But I feel like that's definitely pushed us to. Or especially you to have. It feels like you've had the kid together. <laughs> no, but we, it, it, yeah, we do have yeah, together. Yeah. So yeah, you know I mean, so it's like it's like the 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 level of sort of routine and structure we have now is much more improved. Because yeah, yeah. You, you have, have to, to be so, and and also because of how busy we are, and and like I said, there's always something to do. We're very much aware of ourselves burning out. So like I said, prioritizing time that you know is time with Isaiah or is time with Roxy or you know, whatever is outside of work. So I think when you structure it right and you prioritise that time and you make that, and you know, you make your work time as efficient as, a pos as possible, mm. you can create a better balance with it. So I think you've got a good balance of things at the moment, yeah. but Isaiah doesn't miss out on a thing and you get everything done, if not more. Mm. Well, did you have a good relationship with your dad? Um, yeah, like I've, I've never had a bad relationship. I think now I've got older, I've had an even better relationship. Now I've got Isaiah, it's even better because I see them more. But I've always had like a hard work ethic, so I think, I haven't took time to spend with my family maybe when I was younger, so now I'm just doing it so much now mm. because I value that a lot more. Yeah, do you feel like your value shifted when you started your own family? 100%. What from? Just from what mattered. I think, you know, when you go home and you see them, it's like 
your worries kind of go away or your things you think matter don't anymore. Um, I think it's, um, like I said, it's, it's mad how it all, everyone says different things when you have kids and everyone kind of tells you different things, but no one can explain it fully. Your own, it's your own personal experience, isn't it? Mm. But for myself, I, it's been the best thing ever. Mm. I agree, bro. It's hard, to, it's hard to describe. It's actually indescribable. Mm. It's, it's a weird <coughs> one. It's a weird one. I feel like you're definitely more in the moment. Um, I, think, I, I think, personally, it makes you think a lot more long-term about your life decisions and where you're spending your time and what you're doing and also one thing that changed for me when um, I had my firstborn was who I want in my life and who I want to actually share rooms with my children yeah. because anybody who shouldn't you know if I want to have them around my son why wouldn't I have them around me and that was something that actually created space with a lot of people in my life as well now with yourself, obviously, I've been following the journey on social media um, with your journey to becoming a father. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Um, what's the What's the deal with that? You're going. You know, you mentioned fertility clinics. Yeah. You and Roxy are, you know, obviously trying to take that journey to become parents, which I think you both would be amazing parents. Thank you. And of course, Uncle Troy. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll be. A, it's like a. It's like a lunch yeah, break. Yeah, like, <laughs> 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 So what, what's the latest with that? Because you got again, you're, you're super transparent, and this yeah. is a very, um, you know, it's a very sensitive subject. Yeah, yeah. You know, very sensitive. So, what is the what is the latest? To with be that? fair, I was I was very um, reluctant, not reluctant to. I I, I didn't want to. I always wanted to speak about it because I know how important it is, especially in the bodybuilding space. What we were talking about. Yeah. Um, but um, it actually took me a while to to start speaking about it. But the as soon as I did, the amount of people. That I've had, you know, reach out to me for advice and are going through similar things with fertility and whatnot has been crazy. So, um, but yeah, long story short, um, I, I we've been trying for just under just about two years now. Um, the first year of that, I, I wasn't having any fertility checks done. I always had my blood work done and whatnot through whilst I was competing, um, and there was no no issues. But um, yeah, after my last show, um, I actually went and because a prep is quite harsh on the body, so. I went to have a, a semen analysis and whatnot, and it came back with azospermia, which is essentially when there's no sperm being produced in the semen. There's still semen, because the lads, when I first told the lads, they laughed at me. <laughs> the I said, I've, I've got this, and they're like, so they're thinking, I was like, nothing, nothing comes out. I don't know, so, <laughs> Looking at you like, why are yeah, you laughing at you? Yeah. That's it, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> oh, it's hard, man. You know, I've been the host, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's <laughs> Don't smile. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's good. I get it. But um, yeah, so AIDS of sperm is where you don't have any sperm in the semen. Um, and it was for basically a complete shutdown. Um, and that was off the back of using PDs um, for my competing. Um, so since January last and has year. Has that been diagnosed? As in, yeah. like they've said, it would have been a direct impact. Yeah, so. you, you either have azospermia yeah, through a genetic, um, it can be genetically, it can be like a physical issue if you have like a blockage. Um, other than that, it's hormones. Um, I didn't have anything genetic, I had no blockages, it was just down to hormones. Mm. Um, so yeah, long story short, we ha I, had, I had that. Um, so over the last 12 months, I've been in the process of downsizing quite a lot. Um, getting fitter, getting healthier, because obviously, like I said, with bodybuilding, it's great for bodybuilding, but in health-wise, it's not great. So I was 18 stone, um, not the best fitness-wise, looks good, but not the best fitness-wise. Um, so yeah, though over the last year, I had to go through um, about five, six months of hormone therapy, um, which is certain drugs and, and whatnot to help sort of kickstart your body to, to produce sperm again. Um, regular semen tests, regular blood tests, and that took, pretty much the best part of a year to get me back to the point where I'm completely normal now. In terms of fertility, I've got full fertility capacity and whatnot. Um, but on the back end of that, Rox has, um, so my fiance, she has a rheumatoid arthritis um, and a slightly low egg count. Not in a, not to, too bad, but slightly low. So that puts her at risk as well. Um, so yeah, between all of that, it's just been a case of trying to get my, my fertility back which we were successful in. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thanks. That's it. Yeah, thank you. For it. <laughs> so I've got swimmers now, I've got swimmers. Um, but yeah, so that, that was only from like last month. So that took a whole year. So same again, it's, it's the, I, I spoke about it and put it out on my social media because uh, people need the transparency of it. Everyone's so quick to, to do certain things and whatnot, but like, and I've done great, uh, you know, for me, it's been worth it. Like the last two years have been tough, especially on my partner and whatnot. Um, and for both of us, we like really want to have kids, but I understand the reasons why I did stuff and I was very, and I, the reason I talk about it as well is because I did everything to the book 
blood work, regular blood work, regular cycling up, post psychotherapy, or, and, and it still happens. And, and it, that's what the risk that comes with it. Um, but then off the back of that, it's taken me 12 months, the best part of 10 grand, to get myself back to the point where now we can start trying on a level playing field. And even then, conceiving is not something that's just happening. Anybody? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it can be hard. You know, it's, it's very small chances. So, yeah, long story short, we're, we're in the process of going through IVF at the Well, we're waiting for our, our first appointment with IVF. We've been um, NHS, we're eligible in NHS for it now. So it's been a, a long journey, but we're sort of light ended a ton of now. We can conceive naturally now in terms of on paper. Um, but we're still going through the IVF route because we're not getting any younger. We need to get started. Um, but yeah, how's that been mentally though, psychologically getting through that? And you know, obviously, if you're attributing it to yourself yeah. as your part of the relationship, yeah, you know, it's hard to avoid yeah. kind of animosity in mm -hmm. a way, even if it's not safe. Yeah. Sure. You know, there's a there's a vibe that you know it's your fault. Is that yeah, the case? Do you there, feel like there, that? there hasn't been because Rox has always been understanding, and it's always been something that, like I said, I've always been transparent with bodybuilding and PD. So I'm aware that these these things can happen. Um, but yeah, it's been tough because I I've definitely you know had a lot of guilt. I still do, and especially because with Rox's arthritis, she's rheumatoid arthritis had it from when she was young, and she has it pretty bad and she's been on some really harsh medication and the, the harshest medication she was on uh, methotrexate was something she has to come off of to to get to get pregnant essentially um but it's one of the as soon as you come off it her health literally is at rock bottom um so you know she's come off that for us to get pregnant obviously we can't because of my issues so it's been very tough on her and i felt massive guilt for that and she's been completely understanding with it there hasn't been any animosity about it at all because she's very understanding but what would you say to couples who are going through that obviously you guys have seen the light at the end of the tunnel yeah been a long 12 months you know, yeah, yeah. What, what would help people to get through that in terms of them facing the same challenge with fertility um, I'd say just communicating with each other, understanding it's both of you. And it, uh, an issue I had right from the start was, especially because it was my issue, I was very much within myself. And I was like, it's happening to me. And uh, I behaved in that way. And, it's, and it was completely, you know, that, that was causing animosity. And, and, you feel like that was because you were trying to take responsibility? Yeah, because I, I was, take, yeah, I was. But, and it was like, I remember when I first got, got the results, like, it's me. And I, when, when I'm feeling aware about things, I'll completely shut off. And, and you know, that's not fair on, on your partner. So I would say understanding that it's both of you, whoever's fault it is, it's not, it's not these things happen. It's not necessarily PDs, like people struggle with uh, yeah. fertility. So I'd say just, just communication, understanding it's both of you, it's still gonna take both of you to, to, to conceive and be pregnant. So it's just part of the journey. It's not a part of the journey that we all want to have, but it is part of it. So the same way you would do in anything else, just working together talking, communicating effectively, letting each other know exactly how you feel, being vulnerable. My thing was I didn't want to say how I feel about it. It took me a long time to just say, you know, I feel embarrassed. I feel, mm. I feel embarrassed about it. I feel demas emasculated by it, like all of these things. But that helps me sort of get my confidence back and then, like, you know, actually speaking about it and yeah. talking to people about it's, it. It's beautiful to hear that you can be that honest with your partner. Yeah. You know, and obviously she looks at you like any relationship. You look at your partner for strength. Um, and you obviously you don't want to show that vulnerability from the get-go because yeah. it's natural, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's something that I think these Stafford women are really good at. <laughs> <laughs> it must be, it must be. Yeah, no, she, I can't, I can't <laughs> Some know. Some of the are very nurturing yeah, yeah. from Stafford. I don't know if you heard that, Troy. <laughs> no, it, she has been, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't knock her at all. It's been, like I said, it's a lot on her. Obviously, especially with women like this, the dream to have, she it's a dream to be a mum. Like yeah. she's the best auntie, and she's got the other health issues that are worsened because of this journey. So yeah. there's so much for her to go through, but she's understanding we're we're completely in it Your together. Team. So yeah, hundred percent. So um, yeah, man. Hopefully, uh, maybe we could do round two podcasts or have oh, a little right. have a little one by then. <laughs> I was gonna say, fingers crossed. Yeah, one day. Your, your children or your, your child can watch this back. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, 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 that that's what it. I love about the podcast as well. It's like, it's just it's just a checkpoint. Yeah. It's a space in time that we're sharing right now. Yeah. Not to get all romantic about it. <laughs> but no, it's it's true, yeah. Years, yeah, you just yeah. seem like, yo. It is. Look how, you know, yeah. look how dark my hair was. I've got no greys. I've got less greys, you know what I'm saying? Um, what are you guys working on right now in terms of future? What's the exciting stuff that you've got in 2023? And what would you, you know, recommend to people who 
want to take more notice of your story? Where can they follow you? Where are you most active? I'd say both of our pages um, on what Instagram. Are they, what are they, what are they? Troy, under, no, Troy.hemus on Instagram. Um, Scott underscore Swinch. Yeah. On Instagram and then Swench underscore. Like online. you said, just search Swench. Yeah, just put and Swench we'll in. Come up, yeah, come yeah, up. Everything comes up. What are the things you're working on this year, man? What's the main goal? What's the main outcomes you're looking to do? We're just trying to grow, aren't we? Yeah. Like I said, with with especially our, our main thing is the coaching. Like, and with the coaching, like I said, our client base is everyone. There's not a single person watching this. Anyone that we cannot help in one aspect. So for us, it's just about growing. That's why we've got you guys on board yeah. and just working on our content and and just trying to expand as much as possible because our, our business model and everything is is where we want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, Troy's been putting a lot of working on the um, uh, the good cons- like a consultancy firm for online coaches and PTs. So. We want to teach people how to make six figures, basically. Um, We've had 10 years experience doing it with zero, I won't say zero business knowledge, but it's all been, as Scott says, completely authentic, completely organic. We've just grew it. So we're going to be able to teach people how to do that in a quarter of the time, if that. Um, I think there's a huge kind of market for it. And I don't think everyone's on it at the moment, but I think with 10 plus years experience, we can can definitely help a lot of people with it as well. And that's something that's been put together. So that's the online course, all the modules taught by myself and Troy. So that, that's something that's going to be launching. Obviously, the coaching is growing. Um, everything else is still running behind the scenes as well. We have, we're going through a rebrand of the supplements at the moment. So that's a little bit quiet, but that will be back going by the end of the year. But everything we want to do, we're doing in terms yeah, of yeah, business yeah. and in terms of our passions. And it, all of it is our passion. So for us now, it's just growing as much as possible. Amazing, man. Yo, thanks for coming down, guys. Appreciate you having us. Great conversation. It's been a very open conversation. Um, that's that's what just we're wild. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what, what we're about. Like I said, that's why uh, that's a key part of our business is tran- the transparency. Like I said, I no one, no one can say anything bad about it unless you just generally don't like us. Highs, exactly. You've seen every single part, the highs and the lows, and that's also why people are invested in us because you know you, we're an open book on every level. So yeah, yeah man, we're gonna keep pushing on. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm here to be your cheerleader forever. Love that. Vice versa, bro. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah, man. <laughs>